morning all today we are going to discuss about introduction to the terminologies of anatomy first we can discuss what is anatomy anatomy is a science that deals with the structural or morphological arrangement of various components of an organ tissue or part of the body and it is correlate with its function the term anatomy which is derived from a greek word anato which means cutting up so we are learning anatomy with the help of dissection why to learn anatomy it is the cutting up of cadaver or dead body is the method by which study of structures of living things is made possible herophilus from alexandria he considered as the father of anatomy and the andreas vesalius which is considered as father of modern anatomy and the remembrance of the herophilus we put a name of the confluences of sinuses as confluenza herophili we are going to looking at what are the subdivisions of anatomy first we can discuss what is the cadaveric anatomy the cadaveric anatomy or the gross anatomy is a branch of anatomy for understanding the appearance of parts or organs and their relations with unaided eye second one is living anatomy it is a study of anatomy in a living individual by using simple techniques like inspection palpation percussion and auscultation third one is embryology or developmental anatomy it is a study of early developmental stages of organism it is a knowledge of embryology which provide the basis of the certain of the clinical conditions that might have resulted from errors during early developmental periods of an organism fourth one is histology or the microscopic anatomy it is a study of structures that cannot be seen with unaided eye so we are observe the specimen with the help of microscope fifth one is surface anatomy or tropographic anatomy this is a method can be used both on the cadavers on the living individuals this forms the basis of physical examinations of a patient and for performing surgical procedures in clinical practice in this method internal structures of the body were studied by marking them on the surface of the cadaver or palpating them on the surface of the body like the liver kidney and heart sixth one is radiographic or imaging anatomy with the advancement of medicine it is now possible to visualize internal structures in a living individual without opening the body various part of the body and the organ systems can be visualized by x-ray ultrasound ct scan mri scan etc seventh one is clinical anatomy or applied anatomy applications of anatomical knowledge in the diagnosis and the treatment of patients either by medical or surgical method surgical anatomy is the study of the structures giving its direct clinical significance in the practice of surgery eighth one is genetics it is a study of heredity to the process of transmission of genes or character or traits from parents to the offspring approaches for studying anatomy the human anatomy can be studied by region wise or the system wise for a logical understanding the region wise or the regional anatomy it is a study of one region of the body at a time and learn everything about that region that's just like the head and neck region then the trunk the system wise study or the systemic anatomy it is a study of a one system at a time for the convenience of descriptions and for easy understanding anatomical terminologies mostly the anatomical terms which is originated from greek and latin words example levator palpebrae superioris muscle which is a muscle of superior eyelid the anatomical position the relationship of one body part of the other body parts of the human being is described by imaging as if the person standing in an artificial posture 
known as the anatomical position which is used as standard reference in medical profession descriptions of the body are a person standing erect or lying in supine position and his head eyes and toes directing forwards and both arms by the side of the body and the palm facing forward anatomical planes anatomical planes describe the sectional view of a part of the body or an organ they help in understanding the relationship of one organ with other and structural orientation of tissues different planes are median plane sagittal plane coronal plane horizontal plane the median plane or sagittal plane which is an imaginary vertical plane which passes through the exact center of the body and that divides the body into two individual halves they are right and left half the mid sagittal plane or the median plane which divides the body into two parts it vertically split any object or organism into two relatively equal halves then parasagittal plane a vertical cut that is off center and gives right and left unequal halves next the coronal plane it is an imaginary vertical plane and it is passes to the right angle to the sagittal plane the plane divides the body into anterior or ventral part and posterior or dorsal part the horizontal or transverse plane it is a right angle to both sagittal and frontal plane or the coronal plane this plane divides the body into upper and the lower part anatomical terminologies the importance of language of medical field to the students of the profession is for communicating with their professional colleagues and for understanding the subject here are some terms and the relationship in anatomy they are superior and inferior anterior and posterior medial and lateral proximal and distal superficial and deep parietal and visceral central and peripheral the superior or cranial or rostral which means above or towards the head region example heart superior to the liver inferior or caudal below or towards the foot end of the body an example stomach is inferior to the lungs anterior or ventral nearer to the front of the body for example our trachea anterior to the esophagus and posterior or dorsal it is nearer to the back of the body for example rectum is posterior to the urinary bladder medial towards or nearer to the midline of the body for example heart medial to the lungs lateral away from the midline or towards the outside of the body for example the kidney are situated lateral to the vertebra proximal and distal nearer to the shoulder joint or hip joint that is called as proximal further away from the shoulder joint or hip joint this is called as distal superficial means close to the surface of the body for example epidermis superficial to the dermis deep away from the surface of the body example hypodermis is deep to the dermis parietal means towards the wall of the body cavity visceral towards the organ anatomical terms of movements flexion extension abduction adduction rotation circumduction inversion eversion supination pronation protrusion retraction or retrusion elevation and depression flexion means when two flexor surfaces are brought close to each other extension is dorsal surface are brought in as much approximation as possible abduction when limb is taken away from the body adduction when limb is brought close to the body rotation rotates the body part towards medially it is called as medial rotation rotates the body part away from the medial plane it is called as lateral rotation
circumduction it is a movement of distal end of a part of the body in a circle it is a combination of flexion extension abduction adduction medial rotation and lateral rotation inversion of the foot when medial border of the foot is raised from the ground eversion of foot when lateral border of the foot raised from the ground supination when the palm facing upwards pronation when the palm facing downwards protraction when the lower jaw slides forwards in its sockets in the temporal bone of the skull retraction when the lower jaw slides backwards in its sockets in the temporal bone of the skull when the lower jaw come closer to the upper jaw it is called as elevation when the lower jaw lowered from the upper jaw it is called as depression various positions of the body are supine position prone position lithotomy position supine position the person lying with his back and face and abdomen facing upwards prone position the person lying with his face and abdomen lithotomy position the person lying with his back and his leg putting upwards with the help of an external instruments the normal configuration of the body are externally skin inside that the superficial fascia which contain adipocytes blood vessels lymphatics nerves etc and inside that deep fascia and the deep fascia gives numerous septa towards the bone it divides into compartments and in compartment we have muscles blood vessels nerves lymphatics etc at the center there we can see the bone thank you for watching this video